Good evening, everybody. This is Model Railroad Addict coming to you here with layout update number eight. Uh, I'm going to try to make this a uh, quick one, probably the quickest one yet. The Colts game's getting ready to come on. I live here in Connorsville, Indiana, so I'm a kind of a big Colts fan. So I don't want to miss them beating up on the, the Titans tonight. So uh, I'll make this pretty quick. Uh, I work for the next week straight, starting tomorrow. So I won't be able to get a video up probably for another week at least. So I thought I'd get another one up here real quick to uh, just let you know where everything stands. Uh, I did get a new thing in the mail today, and it was this engine right here. See, that is a uh, Kato AC4400. I bought that at uh, uh, MB Klein, uh, aka modeltrainstuff.com. I purchased that on Sunday night, and it uh, showed up in the mail today. So kudos to them on their very fast shipping. And it's uh, awesome. I only the only thing uh, I wasn't expecting when I got it was there was some assembly required. I had to install the white the number boards, uh, some front railings, and some rear MU cables, which were a challenge for me since I don't do that. But as you can see, the number boards are lit, and it has operating ditch lights, whereas the Atherin one just had operating headlight, dummy ditch lights, and number boards were not lit. So, uh, kudos to Cato for getting all the lighting effects on such a small locomotive. Uh, Atherin, I think they more concentrate on HO anyway. So, whatever they get in end scale is just a bonus, I would assume. So, but as you can see, I've got a train running on the Cato Unitrack. Um, I have decided to go ahead and instead of running Cato Unitrack for the main track, I'm going to run the flex track with the road bed. Uh, I found tons of road bed. I'm going to run Midwestern road bed, cork road bed. I like the cork road bed the best. Uh, I haven't really dealt with the foam a whole lot. I tried a little bit of HO. Wasn't my cup of tea. So I'm going to stick with the Midwestern cork road bed. I've dealt with it a lot in HO scale and I like it. So I'm going to use it in scale. Uh, track wise, I found a bunch of code 80. Uh, I haven't found a whole lot of code 55 and nothing, but I have found a bunch of code 80, so I'm probably going to run the code 80. I know it's got black ties. The rails are just a little bit taller. I'm thinking with the taller, a little bit taller rail, it's going to make it easier for me to solder my feeder wires on. And then uh, also with the black ties, it's not going to matter much because after I get all the track down, I'm going to go through and bow, or weather it, um, paint it all brown and weather it make it look like it's supposed to look like so the black ties aren't really going to bother me out of the gate um, <clears throat> I have decided to put the duck under in I've actually got it out here it's right here I've got the duck under here I'm going to go ahead and install this my next weekend I'm off here next weekend uh, get that put up in there and hopefully also finish putting all the tabletops on the bench work uh, as for the main lines, it's going to be a, a double main line, which will run around the bench work, obviously. And uh, I've already had some lines drawn in. I had a buddy of mine come over, want to get some more practice on his. He finally got back into his, doing his layout, got moved into his house. And his guy's bench work, I've actually helped him on it a little bit. But he wanted to practice on drawing lines and stuff because it's been over a year. He did it once before at my house. And, and I told him, you know, if you want, I've got the bench work up. If you want some more practice on this one. He can just don't mess my tabletops up and pull whatever up, put row bed you lay up. So he did. Uh, the lines are still here. And as you can see, the lines, you can see the lines back here. He put those in. He drew two and a half inches on center to lay his road bed. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and use the outer one for my end scale. Uh, as you can see, it's right here. They're two and a half. I'm not going to use the center. I'm just focus on this outer one to start. I've got a good area right here. I can put a small industry back in here, two-track industry, with uh, one of the buildings that are made to go up against the wall. Uh, it'll curve in. That's a 38-inch radius into another 38-inch radius right there. that will curve around, and it goes down and curves back there. That's a 34-inch radius curve back there. And then what I've done is he had them coming up through here, but I, I, I'm going to go, and I drew the other one. I cut it off right here. And this is a 28 inch radius that's going to come up and run down through here because this whole area right in here is going to be diesel facility. Large diesel facility. Probably talking a standard maintenance diesel shop right here, two, maybe three bay, 
I'm going to have a, a, a smaller, another extended maintenance diesel shop back here for locomotives that need extended work. There will be a sanding area, refueling area. I'll have buildings, office buildings for employees and probably a maintenance way area. Uh, this whole area through here is going to be a town area. Uh, probably I'll, I'll have some town buildings, cars, streets, roads, parking lots, park, the whole not, the whole enchilada there to make the layout really kind of pop, make it come to work, came, come to life. Uh, back over here, I'm um, thinking either an ethanol plant or some kind of refinery or a hopper area, a uh, grain facility back in there. Uh, some little small industry right in here, uh, yet to be determined. Uh, back here, I'm gonna have a switch come off that's gonna go through the wall and out in the other room, there's gonna be a probably two and a half foot wide by eight foot long staging yard out there so I can build trains out there, bring them in, run them on the layout and not have to store long trains anywhere on the layout. Uh, the, the main line will come through here and it's gonna curve over that, it's gonna be, the inner main line will be a 28 inch radius there. It's gonna curve over there. I'm gonna do a 34 inch radius on the outer one there. Another 34 inch back there, around to another 34 inch right there, joined back on over there. So the smallest radius on my main line is gonna be 28 inches. I'm not sure how far off center to have the end scale. HO, we ran two and a half inches. That ran a number six Atlas switch with a four and a half inch piece connecting them together was perfect for two and a half inch. Not real sure what the end scale difference is. Uh, now when I had the O, it was at five inches for the main line. Of course we come down to HO, which is HO half of O. Uh, we went two and a half. So now I'm wondering, is it an inch and a quarter for N since it's not quite half of O, but pretty close. But uh, I'm probably gonna buy a couple switches and uh, put them together to see what kind of distance I'm getting on them. Uh, and then go ahead and draw my inner main in, but I'm gonna go ahead and get this taken care of, that come on and get the outer main drawn. And then after I get figure out my size for the inner main, I'll go ahead and get it drawn in and uh, get it all down, start road bedding it, and then start getting some track lights so we can get some, some stuff going. Uh, I did here today find my camera right there. Uh, so I will be shooting videos with it. I'm not using it right now because I just found it and it's dead. It's plugged in and charging. I also purchased a tripod so I'll be able to use the camera without having to hold it. And I can actually, for the first time ever, be in front of the camera instead of standing behind my, like my iPhone 5C I'm using right now. So I know that was a lot here and it's almost a little right at eight minutes to probably gobble up. But like I said, the Colts game's probably just getting ready to start right now. It's 8.30. Kickoff is supposed to be like 8.25. So I'm kind of in a hurry. I want to get up and watch that. So <clears throat> that's where I'm at right now. Uh, if you want, if anybody knows what a good diameter, a radius, the uh, uh, talk, Chris. If anybody knows what a good center line distance for, double, for a main line is on end scale, please comment down below to give me kind of a head start on that instead of having to wait a week to go buy some switches to do some measuring to find out, or if there's a, a website I can go to that maybe already tells me this stuff. Uh, like I say, I'm really new to N-Scale. I've really just gotten into really working on it here in the last, well, I decided three months ago to do it, but I really didn't work on it much, so I've just now focused on it, so I've really only done it for about a month. I've never sat down and did a track plan for N-Scale, so I'm really new to that, so any help I can get would be much appreciative. So, but I gotta go, because I can hear the game start already, so. And I'm going to go ahead and sign out right here. So until next time, I'll see, I'll, I'll see you later.